How's it's it going, mate? You all right? Good. I'm a big fan of your podcast. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. Yeah. Are you in Barcelona? In Madrid. In Madrid. Never Barcelona, always Madrid. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. cool. Based in Madrid. Right, right. How old are you out of interest? I'm 40. Oh, okay, a bit older than me then. So you're a good yeah. age to uh, appreciate all this music back in the day. Perfect age. Yeah, I got me when I was like 20 and so on. So yeah, I was managed to see like most of the bands live and everything. So now it was good time. Well, good timing, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I got Nirvana in the 90s. Then at the end of the 90s, I got uh, Oasis and all those. And then I got the, the 2000 revival. So pretty good. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So why uh, take us back to that time then? What were you doing in the early 2000s? Well, I was in college. I was back in college. I was studying university here in Madrid. So, yeah, so I had actually plenty of time to to go to gigs and travel and go to concerts all over the place. So it was it was a nice time. It was a nice time. Okay. So you mentioned like Nirvana and other bands. Like we always have... Did you always have an interest in in British bands and American bands, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've always got had a big interest in, yeah, both British and American. I mean, um, my father is a big Beatles fan, so at the end, all the all the music, like yeah, especially Beatles, and then I would say more American bands from this. Well. Beatles and then Sex Pistols, that's more in the 70s, and, and the Clash and all the all the punk uh all the punk bands from the 70s and then the 80s with uh, Joy Division and all the Hacienda bands and uh, and so on. So yeah, I got that from my father basically. So okay. that's so that's yeah. And then from the US, it's more like psychodelia from California such as Love and uh, all the bands from California from the 60s and the Birds and so on. And then and then New York, like Velvet Underground and, and Ramones in the 70s and so on. Yeah, so big fan of, I would say, yeah, British and American music. Okay, cool. And then, they, yeah, just in terms of like hearing that music in the noughties, like where would that be introduced to you kind of thing? I, I actually lived in Argentina. So when I was eight years old, I, I, I moved to Argentina because of my father's uh, work. So I went to an American international school. So all the kids that came from the, there were many kids that came from the US uh, because there was, it was the time of the privatization of many American companies and European companies going to South America. So the kids basically went to this international school. So that's when I started, like all the American kids started to bring American music with bands such as Nirvana, I know Bush, I don't know if you remember from back yeah. in the day. Uh, and there was a lot of British kids that were as well coming. So Nirvana, Bush, uh, Weezer at that time, Green Day. So that's when I started to listen to all, to all that music. And at the end, Oasis. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that mix of people from basically US, Europe, and so on, introduced me to all that, to okay. all that music. So we're still in Argentina when you know, the likes of The Strokes came out kind of thing? No, I came back in 98. The Strokes was 2001, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. as they said. So yeah, I came back in 98. And 98 to 2000 were like those trans kind of transition. I think it was that limb biscuit era, I would call it, and, yeah. and so on. <laughs> And then until Is This It arrived, that I think was uh, definitely a, 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 it made a big change. I saw, I remember the Melody Maker with Lip Biscuit on the cover and uh, and one year after it was all Melody Maker closed, but then it was all NME, it was all about the Strokes and mm. Libertines and so on. So, so yeah, I, I, I remember that change, like being, those two years, we were still listening to the people that like the music, Pope, Oasis, um, and so on. And it was, and then all of a sudden the strokes came in and and hundreds of new bands came out. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And do we uh, regularly read things like The Enemy over there then type thing? Yeah, I was subscribed to The Enemy, actually. So I got The Enemy every week, delivered to, to Madrid. 
So I was the only one of my friends that had it. So every week, like we kind of gathered in my house, read the enemy and um, yeah, drink some beers and, and, <laughs> and play some music. So yeah, the enemy was like the big thing for, for us. Nice. Uh, yes. yeah. Did he have like kind of, you know, over here, but every town seems to have like a regular indie night kind of thing. Did you have? Did you well, have we we did. We did in Spain. We had we had some indie nights, and there was a few, a few venues that were actually it was pretty amazing because the influence that British music had in 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 Spain at that time was amazing, and there was a lot of indie nights. Uh, we had on Fridays, uh, I think it was in a place called Boogie Jazz. Basically, it was a jazz bar from like the rest of the days, but on Fridays they had like a, a indie DJs. It was pretty pretty cool. And we had also at uh, Ocho y Medio, which is another place that was also some indie nights. And there, there was a very famous DJ from that era, from Ras Matas in Barcelona, called uh, DJ Amable, that used to also DJ in Madrid every now and then, who was like the, he was like the indie DJ of, of Spain. And he played like Benicassi in everywhere. And he, yeah, so that was the, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Times. And then, yeah, you mentioned going to see some bands in that time, like, uh, were there some standout gigs that you went to? Yeah, I did. I did. I saw the Strokes. The first time the Strokes played in Spain was, actually was in Mallorca. And it was, I don't think they had released Is This It Yet. And it was in a festival called Isla de Encanto or something like that. I, I didn't go to that one. Okay. But then, the, then they played in La Riviera here in Madrid, 2001 for Is This It. It was half empty. And it was pretty amazing gig. I was 2001. Then they did Room on Fire. They did in Barcelona in a, in a basketball stadium. That was pretty packed. And then I have another memory of watching the Strokes for the third album. In a, They did like a promo, promo tour of the third album. And they did in very small venues. So it's a very small venue here in Madrid with 150 people where you had to queue the whole night to get a ticket, basically. And it was pretty, pretty amazing. But I also, like I watched the Arctic Monkeys, the first time they left uh, the UK, they went to Ras Matas. They haven't, they had, they hadn't released the first album yet, so they still had the demo. And they played at 3 a.m. at Ras Matas, and it was, it, it was amazing. Was, a lot of people actually came from the UK, but it was, it was a 3 a.m. gig, um, and and we hung out with with Alex Turner and and the rest of the guys for for the, the rest of the night actually because they were not big. Yeah, like they, they they were already very big in the UK, but not in Spain. So it was like twenty people or thirty that came from the UK, and uh, and uh, no, it was it was that was an amazing gig. And then I saw them the next year here in Spain, but then they had already exploded. So it was yeah. But I I've seen Block Party also a few times here. Uh, first times they came, yeah, and then it's a little bit later. But the Killers, I saw them in a very small venue here in Spain called Copernico. Kings of Leon as well, yeah. But the, no, I, it's amazing all the influence that they had on uh, actually in, in Spain, which is not the case anymore. I think with, with mm. British and American music. So, what were they like to hang out then? At the Monkeys with the good laugh. Yeah, no, Alex was amazing, and um, and uh, they were. It was about everything to explode. So they were no, normal kids, you know. So it was it was pretty cool. Very nice guys. But but then I, I I thought okay maybe maybe he 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 remembers who I am on the gig at La Riviera like a year <laughs> later but then he was already hanging out with Kate Moss and so on so <laughs> that was a different story you know yeah so, yeah fair play. so yeah I also tried to I remember back in the day when I tried to to the first gig of the Strokes I mean I managed to speak with Ryan Gentles because we wanted to go out with them like and that but they were. That was more complicated, but the first time with the Arctic Monkeys, they were pretty cool. I mean, it was he was right at the beginning, and then I remember on the enemy that Alex Turner saying that the best kid he had done it was at Rasmatas that night, um, and he was his favorite venue. But I mean, that's in the 2000s, so he had played 10 times maybe, yeah, <laughs> only 15. <laughs> now he's played all over the world. That was so, yeah, you know, pretty cool. But we saw like, yeah, uh. Franz Ferdinand a bunch of times, and uh, the Rakes actually who supported Franz Ferdinand um, here. I think most of the bands came. The only band that didn't come 
from that uh, time, I remember it was the future heads. We never were able to see them live. I don't know why, because Maximo Park came a bunch of times as well. And uh, yeah, good times. Mm. Uh, did you ever see the Libertines over there? No. I saw the Libertines. I, the first time I saw so the first time I saw them, um, Pete Doherty was no longer the band because he was in Thailand in recovery. So it was uh, Anthony Rosamondo, I think it was the who was with them in a small venue here in Madrid. Um, so that's that's the first time I saw them. I saw them without Pete actually, and then no, and then, no, and then they, they didn't play again. All of them together in Madrid. No, I saw them with I saw them Pete Doherty with the with the album with the Down in Albion, mm. but, but it was only it was it was Baby Shambles. It wasn't it wasn't the Libertines. They played once actually before that with the whole lineup in Moby Dick, but I didn't go because I had the, at the concert of my favorite Spanish band, and I decided to go to the Spanish band, but then I, I regret it because. I would have, yeah, I missed that. I missed that one. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Was there like, a, you know, seeing a Spanish indie bands that were kind of inspired by what was going on or vice versa kind of thing? Look, to be honest, Spanish has always been like, it's very traditional rock back in the day I'm, I'm talking or, or more like pop bands, okay? So one of my favorite bands, it's more like Noise, Shoegaze, more inspired by Joy Division, Mercury Rev, and so on, which is called Los Planetas. Uh, that's my favorite Spanish band of, and probably my favorite band of all time. But, um, and it's more like Joy Division, yeah, uh, and Shoegaze, My Bloody Valentine, and so on. But, um, but no, there, was, there wasn't, there was some bands, but there was nothing, mm, amazing you know there was nothing there was it was more pop bands i would say la habitación roja which was a pop band from the day but it was more pop i would say rather than that indie rock bands yeah so okay. we had to we had to definitely go outside to 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 listen to that music mainly mainly uk yeah mm, okay hey you mentioned festivals i um, mean you know, i've been to some good festivals in, in Spain, Benicassi and Primavera. Um, did you kind of frequent them quite a lot? Yeah, I there was one that was amazing at that time, which was called Summer Case. And it only, uh, yeah, Summer Case that, Festival. Well. It only lasted like two years. I think mm. it was Barcelona and Madrid. And that's when you got like first years, you got like uh, Arcade Fire, Block Party, Kings of Leon. I, I also saw... Well, you had like Las Vegas as well, like maybe second year. I can remember the years, but all those bands, The View, I even saw The View. I think it was the third year there. You know The View, no? I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, with their first album. So Daft Punk even played there with Fatboy Slim. And that was that was a pretty good festival. But yeah, Primavera, I've, I've, I've done quite a lot of Primavera. Not when casting for different reasons. It's on the summer and I'm not here and so on. But Primavera, yes, I actually went many times. But it was more like Primavera was not so embraced. It didn't embrace those bands as much as other festivals. I think it was more, you know, it's more US indie college radio back in the day. I think it was more like Pavement, the Dinosaur Junior, and so on. I love Primavera. But, um, but yeah, I think that a good rep like summer case was very because it was organized by if i'm not mistaken by the guys at cinnamon records which is a label that doesn't exist anymore and they basically had the uh, they had the rights here for uh the, the, they released here arcade fire they released the libertines album um the first one um and they released different albums of of, of those type of bands here in spain back in the day Seems, okay yeah. yeah it was um yeah i went to summer case in 2000 and five i think because the paddington's played the paddington's yeah was that yeah. in barcelona or in madrid the one you went uh barcelona yeah okay yeah because um we were actually on holiday in lorette de mar at the same time okay so we got mar, a, yeah we got a train through to watch them and uh yeah i remember i think dandy warhols were playing yeah and, okay. uh, yeah yeah we um they managed to like sneak us uh onto the side of the stage to watch that and then <laughs> within about 
five minutes for us to leave because they spotted us the security. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Is that like was it the same kind of site where Primavera is now? Was it different? I didn't go to the to the I didn't go to the one in Barcelona. Ah, so okay, summer right. case basically was like one day in Barcelona and the other in Madrid. And yeah. I went to the to the one in Madrid. So I don't know actually where it was located in in, in Barcelona. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it might have been a similar place, but yeah. Um and then what about in terms of you know, we ever attempted to get your own band together or did you ever give it a go? I didn't. I actually started playing the guitar later because I no, I never did it. I was more like I, I DJed in a bar, uh, but I, I I used to play the bass when I was younger, but I, I didn't do it. And I don't understand why it's those things that now I think about it and it's like I should have started a band back in the day. And I didn't. And I started to play the guitar years after when I was like, but more like at home for fun and so on. And that's something I definitely regret because uh, it, w- it would have been a good time to to do something, you know. Mm. It's not that I'm especially good at playing anything or singing or anything, but I mean, it was a good time to actually have fun with friends, have a band, and gather to drink some beers and just like play some tunes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But what about DJ and then what? Uh, what type of music was that? It was indie. Like I used to like. It was from I don't know, Postal Service, Arcade Fire, Joy Division. Uh, the Cure, or The Smiths, some Daft Punk, uh, Fat Boy Slim, uh, yeah. But in a small venue here, close by to my house, nothing special, just to have fun. Yeah, it sounds quite free, good. Though. Free drinks, and you know, and yeah. And now, oh, actually, there it was like outside of Madrid, and then a lot of people from the city started to come because it was like it wasn't very common to play that music in Madrid at the beginning, then it became very big, but I started to put it like clap your hands, say, yeah, I remember even traveling to New York to see them for uh, New Year's Eve. I was a big fan of clap your hands, say, yeah, as well. The first album. And uh, we went all the way to New York. I went to New York to watch clap your hands, say, yeah, with Final Fantasy, which was the guy from from Market Fire, Win Butler and Bob Mood from the um, from Sugar and from Husker Dune. That was the lineup, December thirty first, two thousand six. I think it was. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's excellent. Um, yeah. And then, just in terms of your favorite stuff, then, like, who was your favorite band from that period? Would you say my favorite band, UK, definitely the Libertines. The first album, it's amazing. It's a perfect album. I mean, it's wow. It's I mean. Doherty is a genius. I mean, he's a poet with all the, and, and back in the day, he had that teenage angst and rage that was the like perfect combination, you know. And the first album of the Libertines, I also love the first album of, of, of uh, Block Party, Silent Alarm, plus the first, like with the singles, that Little Thought single, it's amazing. And, um, but I think it's like, is this it by the strokes? And, the Libertines, yeah, if it's like New York, I would say The Strokes. UK, definitely The Libertines, the first album is amazing. It's a, it's a perfect album. Yeah. But if you had to pick your favorite album from that era, from like any band from any any country, do you think you could pick one? Yeah, I would pick Is This It by The Strokes. I mean, it's pretty common. Everyone probably says it, but I mean... I think it's the best one, and it also how it influenced the rest. But I think it's it's a perfect album. It's it's absolutely it's it's the sound of that era, in my opinion. Mm. White Stripes also released some good albums like Blood uh, White Cells and so on. And but I mean, I, I I was more into this. I was more of a Strokes than White Stripes type of guy. But but yeah, yeah, I think I would say is this it definitely. Yeah, fair play. I think Julian Casablancas has got. Spanish heritage, isn't he? Yeah, his father was kind of from Barcelona. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Although he studied in Switzerland, he doesn't, he didn't live here, and he never lived here, and so on. But yeah, his his father was from Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Really. I remember when he played, when they played Primavera, he wore a Barcelona shirt. I think. <laughs> Football. Oh, shirt. really? I haven't. I I saw him this year in Primavera. I saw them this year in Primavera, and okay. then he was. And I remember Julian was always in the in the gigs. He never spoke. He was very quiet, like singing and out. And this time he was pretty, you know, pretty fun, saying jokes, blah, 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 blah. He changed quite a bit, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
Is it good gig? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, we're all there. It's not the same. Yeah, not it mean, yeah. <laughs> has nothing to do. It's like back in the day, you were there and you were like, you knew you were leaving something mm. different. Right now, it's just a gig, you know. Yeah, we're yeah. all there. I don't think that I, what I see is that all these artists right now, unfortunately, they they are not. Uh, culturally influence influential so they are just like a legacy but unfortunately the kids it's irrelevant for them this type of music you know? i know what you mean yeah there doesn't seem to that kind of yeah like you say like a big cultural kind of shift is it no yeah they don't shape culture anymore they are just like yeah adults playing their thing and adults like me go and watch them and remember <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good old years that's yeah, how I see him. Back in bed no. for 11, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a few beers, maybe. Uh, maybe uh, you, you drink three or four beers, you smoke a joint, and, and you're in bed at midnight, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, obviously, that gig you went to in New York sounds like a standout gig, but is there any... Could you pin it down like to one of your best gigs? What, what, what do you think was the best gig you went to? The best uh, gig I went to, um, wow! Well, oh, the best there was one or two kind of thing. Yeah, there, there was there, there was an amazing gig that was Maximo Park. It was the first time they came to Spain. I think it was Maximo Park, and the day after it was Block Party, uh, and we went both days. And that Maximo Park uh, gig, we completely that well, it was an amazing gig. It was amazing at Aqualung. That was an amazing gig, and we had a lot, a lot of like it was crazy. It was a crazy gig. Um, so that that definitely was one of the top gigs from that time that I remember. Um, it's not that it's my favorite band. I really liked a certain trigger. I think it was called the first album. I loved it, but but they had a, the energy that they had back in the day was amazing. Then I saw them a few times after, and it's not the same. But I remember that first year, the energy that they had was wow. I think well, they were one of the best uh, live acts, definitely. Mm. And would you say there's a difference between gigs in, in Spain and elsewhere? Like, is there any other crowds a bit different kind of thing? Or not really? Yeah, I mean, the crowd is different in Argentina. That's the best crowd in the world. I lived there and I, I, I came back when I was 15, so I didn't have the chance to go. As I, I went to see the Rolling Stones a few times, Bob Dylan, blah, blah, but nothing. But uh, but in Spain the crowd is is good. Uh, in the UK it's crazy sometimes, which is pretty cool. Depends on what type of gig. In other ones it's like you even have your like your space where you can move. But 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 uh, I think in those times the, the the crowd was pretty crazy in the UK here as well. I think we and I we were a group of 20, 25 that went to gigs, so it was we we made it kind of crazy as well. But but no, I think it's 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 a good crowd. Um, it's not like Argentina, but it, it's it's a pretty good crowd, I, I would say. Yeah, I mean, the festivals you see in Argentina look wild. And like places yeah. like Chile, yeah. Yeah, no, that's another thing. That's another story. <laughs> that's, if you see Oasis in Argentina or, I don't know, or Iggy Pop or you see any, Andre Ramones, it's amazing. You see it, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's a different planet. Yeah. But this is at the end in Spain where... I mean, it's Europe, you know, or we're energetic, but not as much. <laughs> no, well, but so, yeah. So you had like a group of 25 of you that go to these gigs? Back in the day, yeah, like 20, 25, we would gather a lot of us. We would go there, yeah, do some yes. botellón, which is like drink before, and then you go in. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, you know. And uh, I remember also the Kings of Leon the first time. That was also a very good show with the youth and young manhood. I think it was called the first album. That was an amazing show uh, in Madrid, Kings of Leon, first time, amazing. Because the strokes live, mm, they, aren't, they weren't as good. Like the first show, it was, it was an okay show. It was like, what, 40 minutes? You know, they had those songs, 40 minutes, and they were out. Mm. And it was not an amazing show. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't think that the, that the strokes have amazing live acts, had used to have amazing live. There are some exceptions and so on of particular dates, but in general, they were pretty. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. And then, yeah, you mentioned the UK. Did you have a 
come over here to watch any gigs? Yeah, yeah, I went, I've seen, actually, I've seen Los Planetas, my favorite band in the UK. I went to, to see them there, but uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I saw different bands in the UK, but from that era, not many, not many. I started to travel after to the UK more regularly when I lived there and so on, but then it's so difficult to buy tickets. You need to be very organized, and I wasn't that organized, so I always, but who, I need to think, uh, I've seen, like at the Coco, I've seen a few, but I have to remember, uh, there was other, other one, the Barfly, right? Okay, in Camden, yeah. In Camden, yeah, but I can't remember. It was, it was after that. It was starting 2007, 2008, where I spent more time in, the, in London. Okay. So I, I didn't get to catch any of the 2,000 bands. Right. Okay. It was more Mogway, I think it was, or, you know, that type of, you know. Bit more mature, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bit more mature. <laughs> Grown up, dad rock. <laughs> dad rock. <laughs> they call it. But yeah. Okay, mate, that's, that's brilliant. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, no, thank you. But that'll, uh, that'll kick I don't in. know if it works, but. But yeah. No, it does. That was Bye. great. Like this, it really works. Just uh, doing a series on Patreon called "My Favorite Naughty's Album," and that's that's ideal. Like, especially with the Spanish perspective. No, no, definitely. That's nice. Like, give it like it was not only the UK. How it actually like Franz Ferdinand was here everywhere. Franz Ferdinand in Spain was crazy, and mm. for some reason, Maximo Park as well. Future heads, no. Why? I don't know. <laughs> it was like there were some bands that I hit very hard. The Rakes. More than Future Heads, which for me, Future Heads was one of the best bands of that time. Like the first album was amazing. 